Hi guys, welcome to 4DXT here, and thank you for taking the time just to check out the channel. This video is going to be a wee bit different on the fact that we're actually talking about a serious subject, and this subject is dealing with loss. Now, we've probably all had times in our life where we've either lost a pet or a family member, a best friend. Anyone can experience loss in any ter in, in any kind, it's just what in in, in a way you can lose if you if someone who is so socially really into people knowing what they do in everyday life, if they lost their phone to update their Facebook, they they suffer a loss there. There are so many different types of loss out there; it's unbelievable. And I'm just going to talk about my personal experience with loss. So st step one to how to deal with loss is it's probably spelled wrong, but acknowledge it. And it's going to be pretty damn obvious when you're dealing with a loss of a loved one because they're no longer going to be with you. Or it could be a loss of a girlfriend, which they're still going to be alive, but still not going to be with you, so you have lost that girlfriend. And this is where all the different different types of loss are coming into the fact. And this is how you kind of deal with it. I'm going to kind of deal with the fact of a loss of a loved one or loved ones. Because that's what I'm kind of going through, or been going through, for the last few months and that's the loss of my grandma and granddad now my grandma passed away November and she ended up in hospital she she was at home and you know she had she had like medical issues all most of, most of her life but she was able to deal with them and eventually you know my old age you know she was I think she was 83 and it just kind of caught up with her and her liver failed and her, her kidneys failed and I just do it from my personal experience I remember going to see her with my mum and granddad in the hospital and th at this point my granddad was in a care home because he could not look after himself because he was 87 and in the lead up to my grandma getting admitted into hospital she had fallen a few times so like the last week before she got admit admitted in, or the last month before she got admitted in because she was in hospital for over a month and this is a ver variation of different hospitals, like two, the, the Royal and the Western. Um, she had obviously, she had fallen and fallen again. She had sores on her legs, you know, it was all this sort of stuff, you know, stuff that happens to you when you get older because your body just can't cope. I know you get some really fit, 90 year olds, I've seen a 93 year old still going hell walking playing golf and stuff like that but other people are not blessed with the same privileges, uh, the same, you, know, well, you know what I'm saying. So she ended up with my granddad was in Abercorn Care Home, very nice place. Um, 
and actually what happened was we went to see her the night before and I believe my auntie went to see her just slightly after we left and my granddad was almost going to room, he was in a wheelchair he wasn't permanently in a wheelchair, it was just because we couldn't really move him without it because he, 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 he couldn't walk he couldn't walk a length of a house a small house, if you get what I mean um, he said, oh I want to give her a kiss so he went, we went back and he gave her a kiss and she was she was, and she was lying in bed and it was nice um, at this point I was really collecting the card and didn't know this until Grandma had died actually so that was kind of a nice thought so he's kind of said goodbye in his own way and then the next day my mom was supposed to be going to playing golf and she comes around and I answered the door and I'm like you're not supposed to be here today and I'm like and then that's when she told me grandma had passed away so that was when I acknowledged my loss now grandma wasn't isn't technically the first person of my family I have lost I've lost a great grand Allen and a great grand curry however yes I went to see great my great grand Allen every every second Sunday or every Sunday um, when I was a kid but I, when I grew up um, my parents split up another loss that changed I didn't see my grand Allen as often and as I got even older when I stopped going to my dad's I didn't see her a lot um, and I can't even remember when she died but um, and just like my grand curry I only saw my grand curry when great grand curry when I was with my grandma and she was visiting her mom and I just remember her being in hospital and then dying I can't really remember much after that but I, I was a lot younger than I was when my great grand Alan died so I wasn't too sad or ups, sad upset you know off off it as I am over my grandma and Granda now. So that's kind of the story of my grandma, my granddad, who developed dementia. Um, he had it, but you know, it wasn't stage four dementia where they, they can't remember anything. Because I remember a guy doing a YouTube video where he. He recorded his mom every day and he recorded the time where she forgot his name and she forgot he was her son which was heartbreaking I was kind of preparing myself for that but luckily for us that never happened granddad always knew where we were and he kind of always knew where he was and he, he there was one time when in care home he was like oh I want to go back to my home obviously that can of happen and he was able to explain. He kind of thought of it at the end of the day as a hotel, but in his head, the hotel were providing his pajamas for him, and they were new pajamas every time, even though they were they were obviously just washing them <laughs> and um, putting them back. I mean, another funny story about dementia. I mean, dementia itself is shit. It is one of the worst diseases you can get but it does when you're talking to someone with dementia and they get confused about what's happened in their day the stories can be quite funny for instance my granddad went to the doctor um, which I believe I, and I can't remember which part of the story is is true I'm not sure if he even actually went to the doctor or just thought he had went to the doctor but when he had gone got to the doctor 
this this lady approached him and wanted to give him three loaves of bread and three pints of milk. Mm. <laughs> and how do you not laugh at that way? You, you, he's on about. He was like, I was sitting there wondering what I'm going to do with this this pint, these three pints of milk and the, all these loaves of bread. It is quite funny and. There was, a, there was other stuff where, yeah, like I said about the pyjamas and, and and the people at Abercorn did really do well for them, but then kind of after Christmas, around about maybe February time, he started to deteriorate, deteriorate, and it just went downhill from there, and then come March, lockdown, the... And obviously they cut ties with, we didn't cut ties with us, but you know, they didn't let visitors in because of COVID. And I can say COVID because I can't monetize my videos. One, I've got a strike I believe now, thanks to them between us and music, and, or club code, but this is not the time or place to be complaining about strikes. Um, but I also have enough subscribers, so I can say COVID without fear of getting demonetized. So, COVID. Um, however, they knew he was in a, a bad way. And they decided, and they'd obviously said when this lockdown was kind of coming and we didn't really know when it was, but we knew it was coming, they would say, you know, for the families, um, and this well, this is before the actual lockdown as well, so this is where they just advised, they told people not to visit care homes, but you're still able to do your day-to-day -day -day business kind of thing, I believe. Um, but they got in contact with us and they said, you know, it is um, about time, it's, it's time to basically come and say your goodbyes. So now, kind of going back to what I was saying, telling tell about my grandma. So it's, it's, I don't have this scripted. I only I only have the introduction and acknowledge so far on this. So if I, it is kind of raw emotion just now that I'm going off as well. But going back to my gra grandma, I kind of got to say goodbye to her. No. Certainly, unknowingly, that that was the last time I was going to see her alive. Um, I've been obviously been in the same room with her, and I thought, yeah, I mean, as soon as I, as soon as I heard she had died, I was I was grateful that I did get to say the goodbye because I remember telling her she was the best grandma in the world. I know everyone tells her grandma they were the best they were the best grandmas in the world, but mine was. And I'm grateful for Abercorn for letting us see granddad. Now they had stopped letting people in and just before Grandad kind of deteriorated into the last day I saw him in, he was sitting up, he was talking away to us and the last few times, about four visits or five visits before that I had built this stupid wooden car that it was sat in his house for God knows how many years. No instructions but I spent I think two visits constructing this car and I always said to myself I'm going to go and buy paints and paint this car for him. And it's just an, it was just an old fashioned car that I had to use blue tack on about three different things but it was just because they were they fell off and it was only, obviously you can't control the wheels anyway so who's going to, who's going to complain? So obviously I went on to Amazon bought some paints and 
I it took two goes. Um, I painted it all kind of one color first, and then done another color. I'm not a very good modeler, I say, but um, that weekend that I finished the second, the fi finished off the second one was the last time where we were allowed into care homes, and they did tell us that it was coming, and that was very nice off them. I kind of need to watch my video because I've only got 30 minutes on 4K and I, oh, then I need to start it again. <laughs> um, so I was quite happy for that and I put my, the, the I, I just put the model next to where he slept so and he, he, he knew I had done it and he was really happy with it and he, he was kind of thrilled with it and I'm glad, I'm personally glad that I, I, I done that for him. But on the day of when lockdown was on and they weren't letting anyone obviously into the care homes. We hadn't seen them for three weeks. We got phone calls, my mum got phone calls about them and I tried to snoop in them with the Alexa drop in because we gave them a we gave them this this Alexa show which she didn't know how to use but we used to play the radio for them and stuff like that. And I used to show them, and when my mum was visiting and I was off, I used to drop in. So it was quite nice, it was quite nice that way. But the day that we saw him last, he was um, just lying in his bed. He very, very drugged up. And um, they just kept giving him morphine, so it's um, palliative care, so... For people who don't know, palliative care is literally end of life care. So it's the situation in movies where they're dying and they say, let's just make them comfy. And if you hear someone basically going to palliative care, that is pretty much what is going on. They're preparing the patient for the end of their life. But making them as comfy as possible. And when we went in, he was just lying in his bed, he didn't know... I don't think he obviously knew, he knew someone was there because he kind of moved his eyes, but his eyes were very glassy and... And if you've ever seen a, a dying person before, which I kind of hope none of you guys really do, they do this chain breathing, which is our... Is it <laughs> kind of like that? So I can't, I can't really do it perfectly. But why well, we don't want to do that perfectly? But it's kind of like that, and that's kind of the last image I saw. I remember seeing of my granddad. But we can still speak to him, and. He can hear. He can hear you. Well, the tell us we can hear him, and he's he is awake, and you can see it. Um, and I just, you know, told him, you know, thank you for kind of everything he's done, and again, I did say that he was the best granddad, and still is the best granddad in the world. Um, and yeah, we. I you know, just I said so I asked my mom if I can give him a hug, but you know that even being in the room that could set him off, and you know, I just kind of gave him a kind of a, a final handshake, and did later that day, I think it was. We we got the phone call inevitably saying Granddad passed away, and yeah, very sad times. Again, acknowledging the loss and and trying to learn to deal with. Kind of the pain of losing a family member, and that's I think what this whole thing is going to be about is the pain of losing family members. 
because that's it's honestly the hardest with the more the most difficult thing to speak in proper grammar I think as well you can't you can't it's not on the same it's not on the same level as losing a girlfriend losing a wife yes that you've spent many years with yes that is on the same level but losing a girlfriend that you've been with, with, with for four or five years no losing a family member is ten to a hundred times worse than that and especially one that you you went down and see and then you may start to feel especially if it's a grandma and granddad or you know mum and dad whatever you know you may start to feel kind of regret and I'm trying to think of a, a, a step two so you've, you've acknowledged your loss but then then your thoughts go dark and then you may experience you know excuse the spelling if it's spelled wrong I don't care regret and what I mean by that is not the fact that well, it is, it is pretty much mean the fact. In fact, sorry, um, I'm trying to think where I'm going. It has dyslexia. Um, that you start to think to yourself, "Oh, I do miss him," um, and you start to think, "Oh, maybe you, your your head goes, did I just take this whole situation for the granted, and I did I just." not go and see them because I thought they were going to last forever because I don't know how everyone else's brains worked brains worked brains work um, but I've got this stupid idea and it's stupid and I know it's not real but the way my brain works I see everyone is the same way they are when I meet them and obviously everyone changes and I, I, I embrace change myself but that kind of sticks, sticks, it's really hard for when it's your grandma and granddad and it's acknowledging, acknowledging, acknowledging them getting older and not being able to do the same thing. And this is coming from a 30 year old guy. It's ridiculous. I mean, obviously, like, I know change happens and we, get, we all get older. I'm getting older, I'm 30 next week. It happens but it's just that stupid little thought in your head of everything's gonna be alright and that's when you may feel step two is regret that you haven't went to see them I should have went to see them so many more times I should have been down there every week I should have been there but that's when you need to also rotate back to acknowledge that the fact that when you, you were free you did go and see them. Maybe you didn't go and see them as much times as you wanted, but you did go and see them. And especially with Grandad, I went, tried to go most weeks, because I was on doing a new course anyway, so I was doing study days and I was off weekends, and I'm still doing this course just now. Um, don't get me study days just now, but um, that's near here or there. So I tried to go down and visit granddad in the care home every week. And I did think that the way he was at Christmas and the way he was before the kind of after year that we would get a lot, maybe a couple of years out of them. And then that's one thing I do remember granddad saying is when granddad, when grandma had died, that he thought the ideal was he she was gonna to move to Abercorn after she got to the hospital. Obviously that never happened. And he had it in his head that she was going to join him there and we'd have a, well he said seven years and well might me be and I would have agreed with that. Um, but yeah again you have to acknowledge that you did go and see them but and acknowledge maybe occasionally you could you could have went to see them a wee bit more but then you can't let that get you down because that goes back into spiral, spiral back into regret so you may be going like in a in a circle of acknowledging the lost regret that you may think that you could have went to see them a lot more you could have phoned them 
a lot more, etc., etc. But when my grandma and granddad needed me, I was there. So it's not one point I left them high and dry. When she fell, I was down there. I, I went down the bike the first time, the, the second day she fell, I was there. So they were never alone. And we, she, we had my mum and my, my two aunties that went down to see her as well. My cousins went down to see them as well. So they were never alone and they, they always had family around them. So once again I get over the stupid part of being regret because I, I, I think everyone will go into the stage where they think, oh, I should have seen them more. So you, you then need to think of the happy times. Times. And memories. Memories. So that's kind of three and four. Happy times and memories. I, I, I realized I just made my arrow a wee bit too big there, so. And what I mean by the happy times is, oh, and that links into memories as well. The happy times that you've had with them, the experiences you've had with them. Think back, look at pictures. And yeah, the pictures may make you upset to look at, but then it also may make you smile. Because, oh, you you saw, oh, there's my three, the three of us, our cousins and my granddad's taking a picture. I remember that day we went to um, see them and the, visit them in the caravan. And that brings back memories, which then makes you happy. Not the fact that they're no longer with you, but you they have been in your life and made you happy then and the memories make you happy now. And you just kind of need to go through that process of it and always just kind of have them in your memory. I, I, I bought, well we had bought my grandma a star for her, one of her anniversaries, her birthday or something. So I bought my granddad a star, and the same in the Hercules constellation as well. So they were always going to, they're up there together. I know it's quite cheesy, but I, I, I felt like I needed to do it. And then my kind of idea for step five is learning. learning to live and deal with it and that is no easy task I can tell you that the pain of losing someone and going through probably my five stages of acknowledgement of it because this whole thing is about acknowledgement and this so acknowledging and dealing with it is live is living and dealing with it and the only way possible I th I think really is to keep remembering the happy times and the memories and just every time you see a picture just try to remember where that picture was taken and why that was taken and then were you there or was this just a funny picture of um, grandma and granddad or your husband or wife or whatever and acknowledging again that it's not going to be easy But you will get over it and learn to live and deal with it your own way. But I just thought I'd sit down for half an hour and just talk kind of about the pain that you kind of go through and how I'm kind of le learning how to deal with it.
Because, and to be honest, let's get in here. Way too close. Everyone is gonna do all this, sorry. Everyone is gonna deal with it in their own way. But I, 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 as I just said, it's not an easy thing. It's, this whole thing is not an easy thing. Because this is my, and this is what I believe I've went through. The acknowledgement of it, the regret. Because yeah, I, 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 I did regret. I, I regretted, it went through my head that oh, I didn't go and see them and if I should have went and seen them every day, oh, I was sitting up and playing the PS4 or I was on my PC when I could have been down at Grandma and Grandad's. And that's what I went through and that's no joke. I, I, I generally thought that, but then again you have to acknowledge that he did, I did, I was always there for them. I never once failed to show when they needed me. And I did go and visit. And we had a good laugh. I mean, my granddad, when I was like five, when I was really young, used to have this amazing electric, electric train, like these scale model trains. And I can, I'm going to show them off in another video. This is not the video to be showing off my granddad's train collection because he was obsessed with trains. And he, he, he had built this, or what first one was just like a table that you stick the tracks to and it's it's all nicely laid out. Where there, and then this one was like a massive, like it was like a snooker table and it had kind of like, it was probably bigger than a snooker table and then pool table and he cut like a hole in the middle of it. So, and he'd like put on a, a couple of brackets so it stores onto the wall and then when you wanted to use it, it just kind of, you went, sat, sat down, it would come over you and then you had the controls there and you could mock about your trains, you could crawl out if you needed to. It was, it was honestly amazing. He's put so much time and effort into that and I can't remember why he got rid of it, but, or dismantled it. I've been, I've been trying to find it. I've got, I've got uh, four of his model trains, five, model, five of his model trains, four in a display cabinet that he used to have at the top of the stairs. And that can go link back to memories when you inevitably have to go to your relative's house or your wife's house, your husband's house, well, you're, you're already there. But for your in the sake of your grandma and granddad or friend, I guess, take don't take everything because you're, you're inevitably sharing it with family. But maybe find a few things that that make you happy and you can remember them remember them by so like I've got a whole bunch of my grandma's cooking equipment I've got her knives and they're really old knives but they're good but every time I kind of use them I'm kind of honouring her I feel like I'm honouring her memory because I'm using them to uh, kind of it's cheesy but I, I feel like I'm honouring her kind of memory because you know, she loved to cook and bake and stuff and I'm kind of living on through that. I'm, I'm making her live on through that. So I'm happy and remembering her while doing so. The fact, and like I've just mentioned, I've got my granddad's trains and I've now got this Knight Canon 90D and this wasn't my granddad's obviously, but my granddad was heavily into photography and kind of taking photography up and I'm getting more into this vlog aspect of things rather than, rather than uploading gaming content. Now this is a ra rather long kind of vlog but it needs to be. And fair enough if you haven't, if you're just tuning in now and don't want to watch part one where I explain my five processes of losing someone and you've just somehow skipped to the end <laughs> that's fair enough and that's your choice 
But I, I, I thank you for taking the time just to view even this small segment or even any segment of this video. And if I could help one person out of this, this would be that would be amazing. Just to let let someone know that yes, you've lost someone, but it's okay. You you will get over this. And let them know just to remember the happy times and the memories, the best memories that you you could ever have of your loved one. And them learning to deal and deal with it and live live on. Because that's what we all must do is just kind of live on, kind of in. And carry if they, they carry the legacy forward. But in no certain certain, ter certain terms, this is it, this is easy. This is five steps. This has taken me four months to come up with, and I just decided to make this video today because loss has been on my mind recently. And that is kind of through through the work that I do. Obviously, I can't go into details, but there is certain aspects of my job where it can be involved in the harvesting of organs legally for other patients. And luckily, I mean, luckily for me. I say luckily, but it's in my job. I've not came across a dead body before. It is going to happen, and especially the job I'm doing now. It's more likely to happen now, and the areas I'm working in now, that it's inevitable. At some point, I will be involved either in the process of getting a getting retrieving the organs or just witnessing a death and the whole five step plan is not going to really work or in a way it can work for that I'm just thinking of it now because I've acknowledged yes this patient has died regret Well, I wouldn't be regretting because I I know I operated the the highest of I would like to think I operate at the highest level, so I would not want to regret my my own practice. But I could regret the fact that the patient has died, knowing that I could not have saved them. But you may still feel a wee bit regret, you know, just regret in the the terms that the patient is dead and. You couldn't have done anything about it. Why couldn't I have not done anything about it? Maybe that you could go down that aspect of things. Happy times. We don't really, we don't really have happy times. We would be like friends. Or no, I'm not on a ward or anything. So I wouldn't have known the patient really beforehand. But maybe happy times in your job. Think about the. The good times you've had in your job, it's not always going to be deaf, deaf, deaf. Think about the patients that you have helped. And that would link into memories as well. Just memorise all the patients that you have you have helped over the years. And learning to deal with it and live on. So maybe my five step plan does work for all aspects of life. It's just the way you look at things. But again, this is an aspect of my job I'm still to come towards there was a there was a close call where I did see the end of the retrieval and just saw the which I thought I knew I, uh, the body was all covered up and it would look like just like a bed and I I was like what's going on and it was like the last office's box was there and then it just kind of clicked in my head that that there was a body in that bed and that's the clo closest I've I've been to seeing anything like that. Now, and 
I think I've kind of explained kind of all I want for this segment of the video. As went on for about an hour and 40 minutes, I had to, the 90D only records in 4K for 30 minutes, that's why there was a, a wee bit of a handheld bit there, and sorry for all the focus problems, I was zooming in and out, I've not quite mastered that yet, in my kind of vlogging studio just now, which is in the conservatory. And it is pitch black because the washing machine was on, so I couldn't really expect to be vlogging when there was a rumbling washing machine in the background. It would have been quite funny to see if the shock absorber had kind of cut out some of it on the the comic I make, but that's here near there. This is a this is a kind of a serious topic that I wanted to speak about. And and I I've explained how it's kind of got on my memory. And kind of reiterated to myself tonight when I got in because I thought of this in the morning that I should do a video on this and it would help me Going to kind of kind of to live with it and deal with it is, and I'll, t I'll tell you what I got a wee bit upset. I, I mean, I'm going to be completely honest. I got a wee bit upset, and I generally kind of don't cry at sad films or anything like that. I'd, um, and I got a wee bit upset earlier. I don't know if you noticed that, um, but. Stupid film Titanic. Well, it was a great. It was honestly a great film. I loved the Titanic when I was a kid, and we just kind of watched the last ten minutes of it. So, you know, obviously the sinking, where the the the, the, the ship had already separated and stuff like that. So they were just in the water, and then Jack it, it, it goes down because Rose does not let him on the on the board, even though it's proven that it, he could have got on there if he he tried more than once to get on. But then again, the whole story wouldn't have panned out. The way it did. Um, it was just that scene at the end where they've got the nice music playing, and he goes up the uh, was it Rose goes up the stairs because she I think she I think she passes away on the yacht and she's then just joined. She's now just joined with Jack and all the crewmates, and it's just that little thought there. It crept in and. It kind of just came into my head that it would obviously be the opposite way around for my grandma and granddad because my grandma died first. But I kind of thought it just kind of twisted my head. Oh, that could that could be my grandma and granddad. And it's got a wee bit upset. And there's nothing to be ashamed in that. And obviously haters will be like, oh, you're you're a, you're a baby. You're. A, you know, whatever, I don't care. I'm making this video here to help people move on and realize that they can be happy, but still remember and remember the happy times and all the happy memories that they've had with their loved ones or whatever. You can do with this five step process all you want. I just want to work out for at least one person, or even just literally just sit down and talk, talk, talk to talk to the camera for myself, my own benefit. But what I also want to help you, and this is why I enjoy making YouTube videos. It's not just self making myself happy. I would like to make other people happy, and I know this this video subject is not a happy one. But I feel it's a subject that needs to be talked about and a step by step plan on how I dealt with it and maybe how you can learn to deal with it. And I can and you and if you, you can take any 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 steps because when you go when you obviously go to the the house that they were lived in, you're going to remember them, and you just need to concentrate not the fact, the yes, they have gone, but the memories that you've had with them there. So this five-step plan should hopefully get you through this. And you saw, I just made, I, I, I actually thought about this. I didn't think about I was going to do a step-by-step -step plan, honestly. 
I've just kind of had a, I wanted to lay out an idea and it's just, it's just Kate and the process I've went through of this and that's how this step by step plan has came about and I didn't have an idea it was going to be acknowledge, regret, happy, learning, it's just thanks to talking to the camera that I've came up with this. And you know if you have liked this video and found it helpful can you just please leave a comment saying so and if you do uh, uh, if you do feel the need to if you, if you do want to subscribe it's not cost it doesn't cost anything it would it, w it would be very much appreciated and maybe hit the like on the video to you know because I, I and I do respond to comments and this is a very serious subject so I'm not I'm, I'm not begging or anything even if you just view the video I mean I, I love when you click on a video and you go and check it and you've you've had a hundred views or 20 views and some of them maybe for like a minute I know this isn't like what an hour, a half an hour, 45, nearly 45 minutes now um, and maybe I'm not expecting to have someone here from minute one, maybe like a skipper, but I'm just really happy that you took the time to spend some time with me, listen to what I had to say. So, even if you just view the video and don't leave a comment, don't subscribe, don't like the video. I wouldn't like any dislikes. That, I mean, you have to deal with dislikes. But I, I believe this subject is for everyone and I'm not going to say if I get dislikes I'm going to be disheartened or not, but it's just, <laughs> it's a very weird situation to say dislikes in. But even if you just want to view the video, I, I'm I'm quite happy with with that as well. I I, I don't try and genuinely beg for. I do say subscribe and like the video at the end of most of my videos, but I don't. I try not to do it at the start because I always feel that's a bit gimmicky. And you're you you want if you're if you're subscribing to a YouTube channel, you want to feel valued and begging for subs at the start. I don't think. I may have done it in the past, I think, but I want to alter my practice. And this is why the whole change of the channel is coming around as well. But anyway, if you did like this video, just leave now or leave a comment and maybe experience, maybe um, tell me about your loss or did this, this, did this help you? Because that, that's overall what I would like, if this five step kind of program helped someone just deal with whatever loss that they were dealing with. And I, I, I think it could be applied to all things. And let's just do a quick, a quick, quick teen one. Teen TikToker loses his or her phone I acknowledge I've lost the phone. Regret should I have been more careful with it? Yes. And that could be and then you go back, acknowledge. Yes, I should have been more careful with it, I'm a plank. Happy times. All the happy TikToks that you uploaded and memories of all the the happy TikToks that you've uploaded and learning to deal with it and live with it. So learning to deal with it is obviously you are learning to be more careful with your possessions and carry on living. You're living, you're gonna take what you've evaluated and live and be more careful with your phone. So maybe you can now apply this five step process to all walks of life, but this is now uh, we're we're bordering where well, we are 50 minutes now. So 
Thank you for watching and stay tuned for another video.